Now that is something I would have never guessed. I actually would have put my money on the CSA, but no, we have an American People's Republic. Or in other words, a Kami USA. So this mini campaign is gonna focus on Canada and their own manifest destiny. As you can see, uh, they were the ones to colonize up to the Pacific. And I'm assuming it was something like this. They went to the natives and uh, were just like, this is our land now, eh? Of course, there still will be a battle for Texas. And I think it's just gonna stay between the Americans and the Mexicans. I don't think Canada's gonna get involved. But luckily for the US, they're still gonna be pretty strong. I, I assume that they still would've got the Louisiana Purchase, so uh, that was like the last bit of territory they grabbed. They're still gonna have a lot of strength, obviously, in the East Coast. And then there's always a chance that uh, the Canadians could get some new hockey recruits. Some new African slave hockey recruits. Uh, th there's always gonna be a scramble for this continent. No spoilers, but... It does get pretty interesting. Here's your great powers list at the start, and without a major power in North America, I'm assuming Europe's gonna be pretty isolated. There's definitely not gonna be a lot of outside forces kind of influencing them. Oh yeah, and obviously the UK lost one of their colonies. Obviously they are dealing with quite a bit. I don't even know if they're gonna notice it's missing. That was quick. All right, so Texas has already been divided, which is actually one of the better scenarios for Mexico. They're probably not even gonna keep this either way. Ooh, all right, so the Americans, they just couldn't handle living without Montana. They, they love Montana, clearly. Okay, so there was a, a minor conflict, obviously, and uh, the Canadians are definitely weaker, at least in the beginning, but uh, that's gonna change with time. We also gotta keep an eye on South America. South America could have a, a very good game, just because there's not gonna be some big, bad freedom daddy constantly breathing down their neck. Brazil, Argentina, or whoever else grabs some land, uh, they might do well. So the French, I guess, are, are getting a little head start in Africa. They took a pretty big chunk out of Morocco. I, I don't... I don't think I've ever seen that before. And speaking of head starts, uh, Canada being, of course, probably the main North American superpower is already influencing the, the Middle East. They start in real early here. Actually, you know, the other nation they have a sphere of influence with, strangely, is uh, Manchuria. Just those two places. Okay, Canada, do your thing. Looks like Bolivia and Argentina just got into it uh, and they took a nice, nice bit of land. Although Bolivia being Landlocked. I don't really have high hopes for this nation. Of course, being Vicky too, the question on everyone's mind should be if Germany is actually going to form. Not just the North German Federation, they have to actually get the job done. Because, I mean, to the South, the Italians always pop up. And you know they're going to be bringing their little mustache plumbers. It's just a guarantee every time. So North America just got even crazier as uh, the Civil War just happened. Yeah, it happened and the CSA won. Clearly, the Americans are struggling. It didn't even take that long. They pretty much got wiped out very quickly. So now I think we're gonna kind of have four major powers in this continent. You know, and it had to have helped that they had a little bit bigger of an uprising than there was in real life with the help of now Kentucky, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Ethiopia ain't playing. They just waiting for the Italians to come on down and just embarrass themselves again. They took like all of Sudan and maybe a little bit more. This is pretty cool. I don't know if it's really gonna lead to much, but I mean, just the fact that we're noticing is kind of nice. So of course, you know, the Japanese are being influenced by the US. That always happens in the beginning. But Canada has now reached from Manchuria and now are also allies with Korea. So yeah, if you think about it, someone like Hirohito probably at the moment has a newfound hatred for syrup land. The scramble for this continent has begun and uh, it is pretty chaotic, just to say the least. Uh, we now have Canadian Africa, which I don't even know how that would work. Two vastly different biomes. Uh, maybe this is just a prison colony. Like, honestly, I, I can't think of a better way to just possibly torture those poor Canadian souls than threatening to ship them off to the Sahara Desert. Spain's doing pretty good too. They are beating up Ethiopia though, but uh, normally, yeah, this, this country does kind of struggle with imperialization. And back in Europe, it looks like Austria has had some problems, slightly. They, they got a little bite taken out of them, but uh, more importantly, Germany still hasn't been fully formed yet. So the Japanese have taken a part of Indonesia, which is kind of big considering like how much population lives here. You know, when World War II comes around and they need those, those air units that have one-way flights, they just might have a lot of those. The situation playing out in North America is gonna be fun to watch. Uh, just a lot of divisions sitting here staring at each other. I mean, this place could go a lot of different ways, but Mexico, even though they start off well, they probably won't be involved in taking over anything. I think they will be a nice ally for one of these neighbors. That's what I thought. Yeah, Bolivia struggled to keep that territory. So Argentina's already doing well again. Is Brazil? Brazil's being influenced by Canada. Okay, that's a new one. Oh shit, but Russia's looking scary. Russia's looking real scary. They've got uh, an alliance with the Ottomans and Austria. There's still no Germany to really threaten them. 
Okay, that that's very bad. At the same time, it's kind of nice to see Spain somehow still a great power. They normally don't, and that again will probably not last, but I do appreciate the attempt. Now that is something I would have never guessed. I actually would have put my money on the CSA, but no, we have an American People's Republic. Or in other words, a commie USA. And I think they turned communist and then grabbed this territory back. Well, I mean, Montana's been kind of switching hands back and forth for a while now, but now they have the non-existent state. Okay, well, you know what? <laughs> Let me just say, first of all, there's a chance that they don't keep this. They might switch to something else. We still have a while to go, but either way, I mean, clearly they are very desperate. And while that was happening, we had the Great War occur back in Europe, which not that much happened from the peace deal. It is before the 1900s, by the way, which is kind of shocking. France got some stuff and Norway popped out, but that's kind of about it. Canada's been struggling with some rebellions in the Sahara Desert, which, I mean, they're, they're doing good. They've got a grip on it. I, I honestly didn't even expect this much. It's my favorite event in the game. It's Chinese Civil War time, and we've got a lot of contestants here. This, this, is, this is gonna be fun. Not so much for China, but I mean, for the Japanese and all those upcoming war crimes. You know, I need to focus on this stuff a lot more. Uh, we tend to focus uh, a lot uh, on just conflicts because, you know, we get to take it to Hoi 4 and that's all that really matters. But this stuff is really cool in Vicky 2. And of course, Canada's being fucking Canada. Just amazing up here. They've got good school system, healthcare. They're still working on pensions, but they'll get there. Anyways, I mean, it's a nice place to live. Unless you're living in that prison colony. And the Confederacy is looking pretty nice too. Both them and Canada have trade unions and press rights and other things that a lot of other nations don't have yet. I mean, just ignore this last thing. But then again, you know, Kami USA is still struggling with a lot of these things. I, I don't know if they were doing well before and they kind of just took one giant step back. But this is huge though. The Canadians now have an ally in their continent, which is going to keep them a bit safer. Obviously, they are for sure the great power here in North America. You know, I keep mentioning the Sahara Desert, but I always forget about the Congo. The Canadians have their own Congo territory. We're gonna need your hand, eh? You know, I was thinking about it. It's just crazy that they have all these like social and political reforms, but at the same time, they're still forcing their people to live in igloos. What's even worse, I, can you even make like a, a sand igloos in Africa? I don't think so. I mean, they're probably living in sand castles out here. So I guess here's World War II. I kind of just like keeping track of this so that when we get to Hoi 4, we know exactly which World War we're on. Uh, and you know, a lot of these conflicts are just coming down between France and the British. Those are the two major powers here. And their friends are also involved as well. Iceland just got their independence because, well, Norway was murdered. Sweden murdered little Norway. But it doesn't even matter because finally, the rightful owner is here in Greenland. This universe is now perfectly balanced. That is what I thought. Oh my God. Okay, well, at least I, I thought this was gonna happen. I just, I don't know how <laughs> nations in Vicky 2 go from like two completely different ideologies. You'll notice it's now called the USA, not the American People's Republic. They decided to go on the completely opposite end of the spectrum. They, they just were not down for the, the commie stuff anymore. I don't understand how that works, but yeah, it's definitely likely that the US will keep this up until Hearts of Iron. And this honestly feels like the perfect alliance. I, I don't know why we didn't see this before. We've got the Swedish in the sphere of influence with Canada. This shit was meant to be. Oh damn, look at Persia. Persia going up through Russian territory. They've reached kind of up to Kazakhstan. I don't know what's going on. I doubt this is gonna work, but this is pretty cool to see. Oh, that's just World War II. Yeah, World War II, Persia's on the side of, uh, I believe the UK, which Austria <laughs> is struggling so bad. Spain as well. Okay, so I guess this massive conflict is starting to, to wind down. The CSA officially, for the first time, just became a great power. They don't have any friends, but uh, yeah, that just means the Fascist US is basically the only one in North America that just isn't doing very well. I really love this migration map mode. It's like one of my favorite things to look at in Vicky 2. And I don't know if it's a part of any other Paradox game. Maybe it is, I don't know. Anyways, as you can see, the Western Hemisphere is very popular. Even the US, uh, people are apparently, I mean, they're not flocking to the fascism as much as other places, but they still going. Damn, Persia, I, I was really rooting for you. Your, your alliance kind of it fell apart on you. That that sucks. But that would have been really cool to see him take just a bunch of territory. Oh, you know what? It looks like the CSA is not the only one here with allowed slavery. Brazil's doing the same thing. Hashtag slave squad. Wow. And you know what? The U.S. is really kind of catching up. Even though they're they're fascist now, they've actually been <laughs> really working on their social reforms. I I, I guess uh, that's a thing. 
Well, that's fascinating. See, we're at the end. It's 1935. We're about to go to Hoi 4, and uh, there is still no Germany. That's pretty big. I don't know if it was World War II or it was probably World War I that just solidified the chances that, yeah, that nation was just not going to form. As for North America, things seem to be somewhat the same. I guess it kind of looks that way, but no. I mean, the fascists have been struggling up here. Uh, they lost Missouri. They lost this part of Maryland. And then I, I believe this region's like New England. Yeah, Canada took that. Out of all the times I played Vicky 2, I never saw this. Brazil is doing good. They're a great power, and they are basically controlling all of South America. Nothing more north than Colombia, but still, I, that is nice. Also, Japan. Japan is doing amazing. They've got just a lot of friends, and uh, they're actually ranked really high on uh, the Great Powers list. So here we go. Here's the top eight, which things are definitely going to change in Hoi 4, but uh, this is what it looks like currently. The French are number one easily, and that's actually because of the world wars. They took a lot of strength away from the British. The Japan sitting in third, Russia, and the CSA. The CSA is ahead of Canada. I don't know how that works, but uh, again, building up to, I believe it's going to be World War III, I think Canada is probably going to be a little bit stronger. It's actually really bizarre to see so many like Western Hemisphere nations just all rank really high. I thought this was going to be almost completely dominated by Europe. Nope, we've got Brazil here in eight. Mexico managed to make the, the secondary powers list and we have fascist USA with all their amazing social reforms. You know, initially I thought this map doesn't look that crazy. There's really nothing super far-fetched besides all of the Canada stuff. But then I looked at the faction map mode and yeah. We're going to have a very fascinating Hoi 4 campaign. And we just got to focus on this alliance of Japan. This might be the best faction I've ever seen converting from Vicky 2 to Hoi 4. Especially their friendship with Persia, or Iran. That's going to make things pretty fun in the Middle East. Of course, the two strongest nations at the start here are the French and the British. But they don't really have as many friends. And honestly, that doesn't even matter. I mean, they're, they're going to be just fine on their own. Now, the Brazilians were about to have a lot more members for this little South American team. But, uh... It turns out a lot of these countries went with like crazy ideologies, a lot of communism, I think maybe some fascism and some radicals as well. But back to the focus of this video, I gotta say, I am really surprised in, in a good way that uh, North America is still so divided. I was worried that, you know, Canada was just going to dominate, but it's still honestly anyone's game. I mean, fascism is going to play a pretty big role here, especially because, I mean, the free American empire is really the only place in the world with that ideology but they're going to need to find a way to get past the Confederacy. But then again, the Tim Hortons kingdom will have to worry about Africa. I, I could definitely see them getting pulled into a war with some of these European powers here. Also, on a more minor note, uh, because North America is so divided, no one got to Hawaii. Hawaii is just chilling here all by themselves, so they just resorted to communism. Well, I guess you guys can kiss your coconuts goodbye. You know, Europe has been kind of boring when it comes to ideologies. Everything is pretty much normal here, nothing too crazy, except for Italy. Italy went with a, a strange one. They went radical. That's pretty unique. Unfortunately, uh, they're not going to keep that. And look who ended up in this alternative universe. I, I knew there was a reason to talk about Bolivia. He's got a much more discreet name this time around, though. Senor Hilter was kind of obvious. And of course, he would end up in South America. It's just so perfect. He probably still fought in World War I. Maybe he's still painting and uh, writing books too. The communist ideology is uh, is struggling. I didn't realize this, but that's normal for Vicky 2 to Hoi 4 campaigns. At least they have Denmark, which is nice. Now the European nations decided not to be just super boring. I'm so glad I didn't miss this. Uh, somehow the Russians took the Suez Canal. It's almost always just the British or the French that get this. First war, and uh, look who it is. Yep, yeah, it's Senor, and he's attacking Chile. He actually might be trying to go after one of his old cores. Persia also just got themselves into a minor conflict with Afghanistan, which they only had one state, so that didn't go very well. Uh, but this Japanese alliance is just continuing to grow. And here's actually another member of that team. These guys are attacking a, a different Chinese warlord. So this faction's only going to get even more land. Okay, yeah, so I need to really start checking on who gets these canals. This is actually pretty interesting. So Brazil got Panama. And again, it was probably because North America was just too busy fighting amongst each other. Now that kind of came out of nowhere. I, I did not expect this. The Confederacy going after Japan, that seems really dumb. But then again, hentai slave girl sounds amazing. Problem is, even more stuff has been going down in uh, the basically the co-prosperity sphere. As even more nations have been eaten up. 
So yeah, this team is only continuing to grow. Now this is amazing. I, I honestly never expected this to happen. The Confederacy joined the South American Alliance, but that's not the point. These are one of the only two places in the world, definitely among the biggest, that still allow slavery. They actually made the slave squad. Okay, and that is why. Uh, I knew they had to have something more in common than just that. Uh, they both hate Japan, I guess. Still trying to expand that ever so interesting industry. Which, you know what? Actually, considering the amount of Japanese people that go visit Brazil or, or move to Brazil, I think there's a chance they might already have those hentai slaves. I was actually confused by this at first, but uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Russia's helping Japan because they're actually both the same ideology. And speaking of the devil, okay, the British now going after them. Uh, and I doubt this will be the last. I've noticed the AI kind of likes to start little gangbangs. And thank you so much, Canada, for proving my point. Uh, so there's something with the Western Hemisphere. They really hate the, the Japanese for some reason. Well, I guess not everyone. Thank you, uh, fascist USA, for making that clear. So here we go. Here's the conflict that we've all been waiting for. The US versus the CSA. Civil War 2.0. And it's actually going to be pretty even at the start here. They're both uh, about the same. Obviously, the CSA has a little bit more strength. These couple extra states they grabbed is actually making a big difference. Oh my god. Okay, well that is a uh, that is an uprising, a communist uprising, in basically the strongest nation in the world. While everything else is just on fire right now. And that's the treaty already. I'm guessing the communists won, since that, that's their flag. Well, okay. I guess Denmark has a new friend. I'd also just like to point out how insane South America has been. Uh, first of all, Senor has taken over Argentina. Okay, that is just terrifying. Colombia took out Venezuela, and I guess Peru wants to die. They joined Japan. Perfect. Okay, so the Ottomans have decided to ally with Russia, just like in Vicky 2. Not sure if they're going to get Austria, their other friend. That's kind of still up in the air. And Fascist USA has finally defeated the Confederacy. About 100 years after they rose up, they kind of got this territory back. This isn't the peace deal just yet, but it doesn't really matter. They're definitely going to keep this. They kind of had to throw out all their values and resort to pretty extreme ideology. But hey, you know what? They did it. And here's a nice little reverse Operation Barbarossa. Russia is probably going to be able to handle the North German Federation. I don't think they're doing very well. And unsurprisingly, Russia is just sending their waves of meat shields straight at the Germans. You guys just really like that strategy, huh? The way this is going in the East, uh, it's basically just Russia and Japan, and actually a lot of East Asian nations, kind of China as well, uh, versus everyone else. That's a pretty strong team. I, I think just that alone could definitely take the planet over. Oh god, no. <laughs> this is the mega campaign all over again. Everything has just been puppeted and released from Vicky to damn it, Russia. You guys just want me to kill myself, don't you? Wait a second, though. Uh, Russia's not necessarily to blame. Thanks, Japan. Japan felt like they wanted to control Germany. I guess they were pretty close friends in the past. That is pretty random France, but uh, okay. I guess while everyone else is fighting a war to end all wars, you guys have just decided to keep on beating on natives. And I was wondering if that was going to happen. So this ended up actually meaning something, I guess. Uh, world tension is at 100%, so I should have expected this. They joined Russia, and uh, the French actually joined the British. Wait a second. Okay, this piece still ended up being a lot stranger than I thought. A lot of this area ended up joining the Japanese alliance. But this is not the North German Federation. This is actually the Fourth Reich. Yeah, this They're a puppet to the USA somehow. Someone needs to get that Bolivian leader over here. Yeah, we're gonna need him. Well, you know what? He's actually gonna be a little bit busy. He's uh, about to go after communist Uruguay. Either way, I don't even see how there is a Fourth Reich. Like, how is a Fourth Reich possible? There was no third, uh, I don't think. And this is it. This is what this video was all about. Will Canada keep their manifest destiny, or will Fascist USA take it away from them here in the 1940s? And I'm just gonna take a wild guess and assume that uh, the Americans have a whole lot of strength. I, I don't know, combining with the Confederacy was probably a really big deal, I'm guessing. And here's just that one-two punch. It just continues to get worse. Bolivian Hitler joined Russia, which means they're probably going after Brazil. And kind of just like that, all the monarchist and fascist nations are basically taking over everything. Like, no one else has a chance at this point. I, I really like the diverse amount of factions, but 
there's basically just one team versus another. As for Canada and the fact that they're probably going to lose right here at the end of this video, I think part of the blame has got to be on just they had a lot of divisions overseas. They were fighting a lot of international wars and also they couldn't have been prepared for like all the divisions in the US. I, I wasn't prepared for that shit either. Plus, you know, 59 factories, they had only a little bit more than that. Uh, that's never really going to get the job done. They really just didn't develop the west coast of the US as much as I thought they would. I don't know if this territory was really as valuable as I was thinking. Because it seemed like Nazi US basically kept all their strength. Here's the first of probably two, maybe even three peace seals. Uh, not much states exchanging hands, but just, of course, a ton of puppets. Damn. And after three more peace deals, so four total, uh, this is finally what the world looks like after World War III. Uh, and the Western Hemisphere... I don't even know what to say about the Western Hemisphere. It, it's amazing. You know, I imagine this man regrets not escaping to South America like a whole lot sooner. Who would have guessed he would have done so many great things with Bolivia? And African colonization has just completely flipped almost entirely upside down. Like these nations weren't at all here before. Russia and the US kind of grabbed everything. Fascism almost completely dominates Europe. You know, I, I was gonna guess that there'd be at least some uh, monarchist places, but Nope, no, n nothing. Like, literally nothing at all. So according to this, uh, a Canadian manifest destiny leads to, well, first of all, the Confederacy winning, and then a U.S. that continues to struggle in the North until they turn to fascism. Fascism that leads, basically, their nation to victory again. As well as, don't forget, the social services and the political reform. Maybe, actually, the Canadians were just feeling bad that they were dominating this continent, and they said sorry and just gave everything back. Honestly, I think that's a much better explanation for what happened here. Thanks for watching. See you next time. A big thanks to Patrick Harvey, Yeetus That Fetus, Raging Fruit, Mr. Fister, Tanner of the Nazareth, Princess Emma, Yeet God McNeckass, Delta Aurora, Dr. Freaky, Abraxas, Ben Moak, Jen's Love Disc, Daddy C Beans, King Solomon, Kiwi Supreme, Maxi G, Swiss Argo, Bruce Vacation, Matthew E, Elijah Senpai, Spookster, David DS, Abrulis, Papa Stalin of the Paintbrushes, Furry Cruz, E, Kirby, and LVC.